Sip Nyanhang. Hello, welcome to another presentation on uh, problem solving. In the previous video, we talked about the two types of reasoning, which are inductive and deductive. And why did we uh, discuss this first? Because these types of reasoning are something that we can apply when we uh, are asked to do problem solving. Uh, what is problem solving? It's a process of working through details of a problem to reach a solution. So basically, we have a problem and then we provide a solution. The problem solving that we will be having in this uh, presentation is really mathematical in nature. So it includes mathematical or systematic operations and can be a device to an individual's critical thinking skills. So why are we uh, encouraging students to do problem solving tests? It's because accordingly, it can uh, improve our critical thinking skills. And of course, uh, problem solving can be a fundamental means of developing a mathematical knowledge at any level. So we can use mathematics when we do problem solving. Although not all problems that we solve is really mathematical in nature. The remainder of this presentation talks about a specific problem solving strategy. There are lots of strategies to do problem solving, but in this presentation, I'm going to talk about uh, one of the most famous uh, framework that we use to solve any kind of problem. It's called Polya's four-step problem solving strategy. Polya's four-step problem solving strategy involves four uh, steps. The first step is understanding the problem and then the second one is device a plan and then we carry out the plan and then the last one is to review the solution and let me present to you what we do in each step the first step is really important uh, because we cannot really proceed to the other steps when we are not clear with the first step understanding the problem how do we know that we understand a problem that is given to us there are some techniques that we can uh, do we can restate the problem in our own words so that if we can do this one perhaps uh, we are able to understand fully the, the problem given to us what else can we check whether we understood the problem we can de determine what is known about these types of problem we also try to uh, investigate if there are missing information that if known would allow us to solve the problem so these are just uh, some ways to check if we understood the problem what else is there an extraneous information that is not needed to solve the problem and then what is the goal the second step is to devise a plan after understanding the problem we devise it we do not just uh, go straight empty-handed and uh, not knowing what to do with the problem so it's really helpful if we devise a plan there are uh, several ways on how we can do this one and there is no specific plan for a specific problem it's our own creativity to think of this plan when we solve a problem but uh, just to give you an idea let me present to you some of the common strategies that we use as a plan we can make a list of the known information what else we can also make a list of the information needed we can draw a diagram, make an organized list that shows all the possibilities, make a table or chart, work backwards, try to solve a similar but simpler problems, look for a pattern, write an equation, of course this involves our mathematical knowledge, specifically algebra, 
if necessary, define what each variable represents. And then perform an experiment like if the problem involves uh, tossing a coin and then count the number of heads that appears if you toss it three times. After devising a plan, course, is to carry out the plan. Remember that it's just a plan. The next step should be carrying out the plan. We have to be reminded of the following though when we carry out the plan. We have to be very careful. We have to keep an accurate and neat record at all attempts. Sometimes we get an error because uh, we do not do this one. Even if we understood the problem and our plan is really appropriate for the problem. However, uh, while doing the plan, carry, carrying out the plan, we got lost because we are not really accurate and we are not neat in writing our solution then uh, we might not get the correct answer and uh, in this step we have to realize also that the, the plan that we devise uh, in the second step may not really the appropriate plan for a specific problem and so after realizing this one we can uh, step back go back to the second step and then devise another plan that you think is appropriate to that problem. The last step is also important, as important as the other steps. If we understood the plan, the device is uh, correct. The, the third step is also uh, done impressively. However, some uh, minute uh, error happened in our solution. We can check those one. In the last step, that's review of the, the solution that we just did. Ensure that the solution is consistent with the facts of the problem. Uh, we interpret the solution in the context of the, the problem. Maybe in the, the problem, it's asking the time in hours, but your answer is time in minutes. Although they are uh, in the same amount, however, the problem is specifically asking time in, in minute, not in hour. Let's ask ourselves whether there are generalizations of the solution that could apply to other problems as well. Here is an example. Let us solve it using the four steps of Polya. Uh, anyway, Polya is a mathematician, an educator, a problem solver. This is the problem. There are 364 first-year students in BSU. If there are 36 more girls than boys, how many girls are there? What is the first step that we have to ensure that we understood the problem correctly? So how can we do that? Let us try to restate the problem. So we are talking about uh, the number of students in a particular university. The total is 364. Of course, it's con it's it consists of uh, boys and girls. There are a mixture of uh, the different sexes, two sexes, but it emphasized that there are more girls than boys by uh, 36. It's asking us the number of girls. So what plan is appropriate for this problem? I am thinking of using my knowledge in mathematics specifically in algebra. So this is the plan. We first represent any variable in the problem, then we construct our mathematical statements, and then solve. Let's carry out that plan. Maybe like we can start with a variable x and uh, define that to be the number of boys because we do not know exactly how many boys and how many girls are there in this group. We only know that the total number of students is 364. So let us just represent. If x is the representation of the number of boys, then we can also represent the number of girls, not necessarily using another variable, but using the same variable x. However, this time, let us uh, put plus 36 to denote that this number is greater than x by 36. So we have x, we have x plus 36. Evidently, this expression x plus 36 is uh, a greater than x by the number 36. Now, how do we create a statement, a mathematical equation? We use the first uh, given fact here that the total number is 364. 
x is the number of boys x plus 36 is the number of girls if we add them together this operation here the answer should be 364 this is now a mathematical uh, equation we can solve this one it's an equation involving one variable we can combine the two x's here we have two x now and then uh, use uh, the different properties of equality if we subtract 36 from the both sides of the equation we would have this one we have 2x equal to 364 minus 36 we have 2x equal to 328 and then solving for x we have 164 that is 328 divided by 2 so we have the value of x and we can now answer the problem remember that it's not asking the number of boys but it's asking the number of girls x based on our representation a while back it's the number of boys so there are 164 boys but that's not what we need we need the number of girls and we can do that by simply adding 36 to 164 which is 200 review the solution how can we do that we check that the number of girls 200 added to the number of boys which is 164 we really get 364 so that is how we can use polyus four step problem solving of course the, the strategy uh, that we uh, think could vary from one student to another the important thing is uh, we are able to carry out the plan and we are able to realize that that plan might not be applicable so we go back to this step the second step and then choose another plan another example we have here a different problem what is the 44th decimal digit in the decimal 1 over 11 so as a fraction it's 1 over 11 but if we write this one as a decimal it is a non-terminating decimal if we review the first few decimal digits so what we mean by decimal digits the digits after uh the the dot here the point the first decimal digit is zero the second is nine the, the third is zero and so on and so forth so i think we understood the problem by uh, paraphrasing or rephrasing the problem like that uh, what plan is appropriate to solve for this problem we can identify a pattern so we observe for a pattern if uh, there exists let's do that so this is the problem we can actually provide an index or a positioning uh, number for the different digits of uh, our decimal here just number the digits using our natural numbers so the index of 0 is 1 the index of 9 is 2 the index of the third number is 3 and so on so forth now let us observe for a pattern if the index is odd we see that the decimal digit is always zero if it's even it is nine so based from that observation we are now using inductive reasoning from this observation we can come up with a conclusion that the digit the decimal digit is related to the the index or the positioning of those numbers of those decimal digits specifically if the index is uh, odd the decimal digit is zero if it's even it's nine so we only have two possible decimal digit so what should be our answer to the problem since we are looking for the 44th decimal digit uh, our answer should be nine because 44 this is the index the position is an even number how do we review our solution check that all values and facts are satisfied so we are solving for the 44th and 44 is an even number is this the only strategy that we can use to solve the same problem the answer is of course no we can actually uh, continue writing uh, the decimal digits here until uh, we reach to the 44th uh, position or index and we would arrive at the same number which is 9 however uh, these two techniques are not necessarily equivalent in terms of 
elegance maybe and in terms of the time that we consume uh, in solving the problem also uh, other techniques are more prone to error so we want to be more systematic and uh, be able to answer a problem more elegant and consuming lesser time so there are lots of problems really that we can uh, solve using different uh, strategies but the common denominator uh, on using these strategies is that we can apply Polya's four-step problem solving. Let me end my presentation here. I will see you in another video from which I will be discussing now uh, some logic and puzzle problems. Of course, we can still use the two types of reasoning uh, that we discussed before and uh, this problem-solving strategy. I will see you there.